So here's a demo of uh, running Windows containers on top of OpenShift. In this demo, we want to start simple and just hit the basics. So this is going to involve the following steps. First step, we're going to create a Windows instance on Azure. Second step, we're going to join that Windows instance to a OpenShift cluster also running on Azure. And thirdly, we will go ahead and deploy some real life uh, workload on top of that Windows container. Uh, so here is the architecture we came up with. It consists of an Ansible playbook that initializes the prep of the Windows VM. Uh, the core engine that's really driving the whole setup is uh, Windows Machine Config Bootstrapper or what we call WMCB that sets up the kubelet to run as a Windows service, that preps the CNI, that lays out the kube proxy, that sets up the hybrid overlay and any other networking plumbing that's needed so that this Windows instance can join the OpenShift uh, cluster. And uh, this also runs a OVN hybrid overlay uh, as against the default OpenShift SDN. This is because we want to be able to carve out a portion of the network for Windows. So let's start with the cluster that's in place. So we already have a OpenShift cluster already in place, uh, which we can see now there isn't really any application deployed on it, as you can see. So if we say OC get nodes, we will see a three master, three worker node cluster. And if you want to see what's powering the worker nodes uh, and the master nodes, essentially it's RHEL core OS with the kernel version of 4.18. So it's a complete uh, Linux based cluster. And soon we're going to join a Windows node to it. Uh, so first up, let's actually go ahead and create the Windows instance on Azure. So if you go to Azure and create a Windows uh, server, VM. Make sure you select the Windows Server 2019 data center with uh, containers. Make sure you select the right uh, resource group. Make sure you give it a proper name. Uh, select the region where you have capacity. Uh, make sure you select the right size. So in this case, we're gonna select a D2 SV3 for the sake of this demo. Uh, make sure you set up the right user credentials. Inbound port none as of now. We'll go ahead and accept all the defaults on the disk setup. On the networking setup, make sure that you select the same VNet as the OpenShift cluster. Also make sure that you select the subnet of the worker nodes and not the master nodes. Uh, we can let it have a new public IP. We don't really need to set up a new uh, NSG because we're just gonna reuse the NSG of the uh, OpenShift cluster. We do need to set up load balancing. So ensure you select Azure Load Balancer and then select the right uh, load balancer. We can turn off monitoring and diagnostics because that's really not the objective of this demo. So we can go ahead and turn that off. In the tags section, make sure you specify the right tags that's needed for this VM. And then you always have an option of downloading the Azure Resource Manager template for future automation, or you can say, go ahead and create it. In this case, I already have the Windows VM created. So let's just go and review that. So once you click on the Windows node that has been created in Azure, make sure you note the public IP address and also the private IP address. And as you can see, it's been created in the same VNet and the subnet as the worker nodes. It's also in the same resource group as the OpenShift cluster. You can go and examine all the uh, resources created, in particular, the uh, network security group for the node. Make sure that you have all the right inbound security rules in place to allow traffic into the uh, uh, appropriate nodes. And so right now the Windows node has been created in Azure. The next step is to bootstrap it. So what we can do is uh, uh, with the help of a Ansible script, we can join this particular uh, Windows instance to uh, uh, the OpenShift cluster. And before we do that, there is a little minor thing we have to do inside the Windows node we actually have to uh, run a couple of scripts to enable the Ansible connection. So this script will basically enable remote Ansible connections to be entertained. 
and next we need to open up uh, TCP port 10250 so that uh, when we say OC get logs we can get the logs from this Windows container so make sure you run those two scripts and once those two scripts are run you can come back and run the Ansible playbook which will make sure that uh, through an Ansible connection the uh, Windows node is joined to the OpenShift cluster. Go ahead and set that up. This should, this should take uh, a few minutes. And after the script completes, you should have an OpenShift cluster that has a Windows node added to it. So till now we have created the Windows uh, instance and we have successfully joined it to an OpenShift cluster. So the next step is to actually deploy some application or some real life workload on the Windows node. So we're going to take a Windows uh, uh, container and we're going to schedule it on this Windows node. Uh, before we do that, we need to know the concept of uh, taints. Uh, node affinity is a uh, property of the pods that attract them to a set of nodes and taints are exactly the opposite. They allow a node to repeat a set of pods. So if you issue this command, we can actually get all the nodes and all the taints. So as you can see, the cube masters, the three master nodes have some taints because you obviously don't want to schedule any workloads on them. The three Linux based worker nodes don't have any um, taints, but the Windows node has a taint of uh, OS is equal to Windows. And unless a corresponding container has a toleration of OS is equal to Windows, it will not be scheduled on this particular node. So let's look at this particular uh, web container which is a Windows based uh, uh, application that we're going to schedule on this Windows node. You can see it has a toleration of OS is equal to Windows, which means it will be scheduled on that Windows node. So let's go ahead and uh, deploy this Windows based uh, web container. So let's see create minus F that should go ahead and deploy this Windows container on the Windows node. So if I say OC get nodes, you see that I have my Windows node and if I say uh, OC get pods, I should have a newly created pod for the Windows web server. If I say OC describe pod and I give the name of the pod, you will clearly see that it's running on the Windows node. So in this case, the uh, Windows web server container is scheduled to run on the Windows node, right? Uh, this deployment also exposed this uh, pod as a service, which means if you say OC get services, we should be able to get the external IP address for this Windows based application. Copy that and let's hit it in the browser. And there we go. We're able to access uh, the application, which is a Windows based web container running inside uh, a Windows node that shows an example of not so traffic. Next step, I don't want to stop here. I want to actually show you an example of how you can de also deploy a Linux container side by side with the Windows container. Uh, let's take an example of, let's say an Nginx container. So I have an Nginx deployment here. It's going to create one replica. Uh, it's going to be exposed on port 80. It is an Nginx based container. So if I say OC create minus F, this is going to, uh, schedule and run these Linux based uh, Nginx containers on the Linux nodes. So if I say OC get pods, you'll see a pod created for Nginx. If I say OC describe pod, the name of the Nginx pod, you'll clearly see that the Nginx pod will be scheduled to run on the Windows node. Uh, I'm sorry, on the Linux node it's been scheduled to run on one of the Linux worker nodes, right? Uh, we can go ahead and expose this Nginx uh, based pod as a service. So we can hit that as well. So say kubectl, expose the deployment. Let's expose it as a type of load balancer. So that's exposed now. So if I say OC 
get parts and I say OC get services I should get an external IP address for my nginx uh, service give it a couple of seconds the external IP is still coming up I'll try again and as you can see this is now available with an external IP address and if I hit it from a browser I should be able to see my nginx container come up so uh, wrapping up we deployed uh, both a Windows uh, container and a Linux container on the same OCP cluster. The Windows container got scheduled on the Windows node and the Linux container got scheduled on the Linux worker nodes. And uh, uh, all of this is managed by the same OCP uh, control plane. Uh, so if you have a microservice application, part of it running on Windows, part of it running on Linux, this is a, an excellent use case of how you can deploy the entire microservice application on the OpenShift uh, uh, container platform. And that brings us to an end of this demo.